everyone. I'm Debbie Giordano. You're watching Valley Homes on TV. Uh, we are with Todd Blesner of Stern Mortgage. Our, Todd and I co-host this uh, TV show that airs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday at 9 a.m. I'm looking at my guest so he knows everything, cool. all, the, 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 uh, all the times it airs. We are here at the we are the, at the pumpkin patch today. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, look at the pumpkins. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's fall, fall has arrived, and this is an annual event that goes on in Milpitas. And we have as our guest today, the chairman of the pumpkin patch in Milpitas, sponsored by I, the Rotary Club. I hear he was chairman by default, though. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody wanted to do it, but Mark. Well, no, it, Mark, well, Mark yeah, I think it, for it. I think it turned out that I didn't show up for a meeting and I was elected but chair. Elected chair. So. <laughs> That's the way things go. So you are Mark Tiernan of the Rotary Club here in Milpitas. That's correct. Uh, I am the uh, program chair for our guest speakers on a weekly basis at our Monday afternoon meetings. And I'm the president-elect of the Rotary for next year, uh, which I'm very honored to be a part of. I've been a Rotarian since 2008. And there's some history in your family. I understand your dad was a Rotarian. Uh, my dad was a Rotarian years ago. Uh, my great uh, uncle uh, was also a Rotarian. Uh, and I have a great uncle who's currently a member of the down San Jose Downtown wow. Rotary Club. Wow. wow. We're a fourth generation uh, family from Santa Clara Valley, so we've been around for a while. Well, we've talked about Rotary a bit on the show before, but we thought it'd be great to come out here and show what Rotary does in action in the community. So, the Pumpkin Patch, how long has it been around? Todd, the Pumpkin Patch has been around uh, seven years, I believe. Uh, and the Milpitas Unified School District has been very gracious in letting us use a portion of their parking lot at the Sports Center. And it has worked out tremendously, both, I think, for the community uh, and for the Rotarians. Uh, it's a very convenient spot. We get a lot of traffic here on Calaveras Boulevard. Uh, it's a really great event for the families and the kids. And I, I know I see lots of kids leaving this area with smiling faces and carrying pumpkins off. It, it's been tremendous, and I think that's one of the things that, as a Rotarian, we all really appreciate when we can see some smiles on some kids faces it makes it all worthwhile well mark let me ask you um, in addition to being a community event I know that the Rotary Club uh, r raises money for fundraising type of events and and things that the club sponsors what are come of the, some of the um, activities that the Rotary Club would sponsor from an event like this that the pumpkin patch would raise money for well, you know, Debbie, one of the great things about Rotary is it's not only an international organization specializing in the eradication of polio worldwide, but as a community-based organization, uh, we really are here to support the community. Uh, some of the funds will go to the Milpitas Unified School District, the Family Giving Tree, the Milpitas Food Pantry. Uh, we also sco offer scholarships to uh, graduates from Milpitas High School in, in Cal Hills. And it's, I think it's one of the reasons why I joined. Uh, the motto is service above self. And I think for anyone who wants to get involved in the community, the Rotary Club is a very organized approach to giving back to the community. Yeah, and, and Mark, we understand you are going to be president next year after Doris Rothstrom, who we've interviewed for this, you know, Channel 26 uh, interview. Again, another meeting I didn't show up for, and I was elected <laughs> president-elect. Uh, president well, so you, you talked about community service, and that's a big part of what happens here at the Pumpkin Patch as well. Maybe talk a little about how some of our youth in the community um, have community service opportunities, that, uh, specifically the Interact kids. Well, one of the great things about Rotary, uh, both internationally and in community bases, is our affiliation with the Interact Club. Uh, here at Milpitas High School. The Interact Club is made up of Milpitas High School students along with Cal Hill students. They meet every Tuesday uh, during lunchtime and Rotary offers them uh, an approach to perform their community service hours that are all necessary for high school seniors to graduate. Uh, so far we've had over 25 uh, Interact students uh, participate in the pumpkin patch this year. We'll probably have another 25 between now and when we close, which is October 30th. The great thing about it is we are open uh, at the pumpkin patch from 5 to 8 in the evening on, during the week. On the weekends, we're open from 11 in the morning till 8 at night. And that's a really convenient opportunity for their Interact students to join us. And they get a real kick out of going down the slide. They helped uh, decorate the maze that we have. And it's been, a, job. It's really, it's been a really good really association. Really inviting and nice, uh, nice place for a family to come. 
That's, that's true. So now, you know, talk a little bit about some of the things that folks have the opportunity to do here at the Pumpkin Bash. They can Which, did we plug the location? We've got to say that. Where yes, the location right? is at the Sports Center parking lot at the Mill Pittis Unified High School District uh, Center. Uh, what we have here is a, a scary maze that's decorated with uh, flying uh, ghouls and goblins. We have pumpkins for sale. We also have uh, some great rides to go on. Uh, we have a, a, a very tall slide and two jumpy houses, and there's face painting available on the weekends, and uh, we try to make it a real family-oriented event. Let's talk about the hours. What the days, hours. We are filming now on Wednesday. Uh, this is October 17th. 19th. 19th. Thank you. 19th. So, Mark, how long will this be open and hours and times? We are open during the week from 5 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m., uh, Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we're open at 11 in the morning and we go to 8 o'clock at night. And the pumpkin patch will have its last day, Saturday, October 30th. And we urge everyone to come out and support the community effort and have a great time with your kids. Terrific. Hey, you know, I, I think I see someone that we might be able to invite over here oh, to talk I'll about the, the pumpkin patch. Look at hey, this Thomas, guy. Thomas, come on over here, come would you? <laughs> come on, Tom. Come, come on around here. We'd like folks to, to hear from, from someone who's enjoyed the pumpkin patch. What, what, do they, what do they like about it? So come on in, on, on camera here and give us an endorsement if you would. <laughs> this, this, is, this is Thomas. Thomas, where are you going to school? Spangler. Spangler. I can tell. Yeah, and, sure and what away. grade are you in? Sixth. Sixth grade. <laughs> and, and you're down here at the pumpkin patch today. What are some of the things you enjoy doing here at the pumpkin patch? This, um, the big slide. The big slide? Is that your favorite? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Jumpy house? Mm-hmm. Have, have you been in the, um, in the maze? Yeah. Scary? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, not for him. He's a bit, he's a strong guy, but for the rest of the group, they're going to be very much, I won't even go in there. Yes. No. So now, would, would you recommend the folks come down here and enjoy the pumpkin patch? Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. Terrific. Well, thanks for the endorsement, Thomas. We appreciate that. That is definitely <laughs> worth it, I tell you. Thanks, Thomas. Good to, good to see Spangler Elementary. Good school. Go. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll get you squared away for the slide in just a moment. Well, Mark, um, I understand you're taking time out of your busy schedule. You're actually on your way, I understand, to a subcommittee meeting for Planning Commission. Not that I would plan, but you do some other community service I things do. Here. I'm a I member of the Milpitas Planning Commission. Uh, tonight we're having a, a subcommittee meeting. Uh, we're looking at trying to, to streamline the conditional use permit process. And uh, oh, hopefully it's another uh, thing where we can uh, benefit the community, trying to make it a little bit more responsive and, and transparent to the community. And Rotary is a, a business type of based type of organization, so something like that fits the, our organization quite well to be able to streamline for local businesses here in the city. It really does, uh, Debbie, and you know as a, as a very successful local realtor that that's very important. Also it gives our residents a chance to if they have to do a remodel of their house if they have to apply for certain changes in their in their zoning uh, these are all types of things where we can really make an impact and to try to make it better try to make it easier try to make it more uh, straightforward and transparent to our to our residents mark let me ask you um what are some of the activities planned for next year's Rotary Club? Well, we're looking, uh, we're really looking forward to our upcoming uh, spring carnival that we'll be uh, having, where we bring in a carnival operator and have rides and games and, and food for uh, the community. And we're looking at that occurring in May of next year. Uh, we're also uh, trying, and we're in the very tentative beginning steps of trying to organize a 10K run. Uh, very similar, based on the success of the Relay for Life program here in Milpitas, we thought it would be a real good idea to bring a nice, really well-organized 10K run to Milpitas. Uh, and we will be looking at uh, the routes. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, associating with various companies you in know, the what's, area. You know, what's funny, the uh, city of Milp we used to have a firecracker. Were you here in the city then when we did a, f a firecracker July 4th run? Remember that? Uh Cameraman, yep, well, that, he's shaking his head. That, that's right. that was fun. In fact, the event went right up Calaveras, right where you're at here, and went straight up. I ran that a few times, and you go around Piedmont Road, and it was a nice loop to do the the 10K. Well, so I promise to run into two when we come. Have well, it. we will all begin to train. And Todd, are you in on that? Or 
I'm going to have to start training tomorrow. It could be a, co a combination of running and walking for some of us. <laughs> but, you know, it's a great opportunity to showcase Milpitas. Uh, you know, one of the things, when you think about Milpitas, you know, what do you think about? You think about a nice little city nestled against the hills uh, in the Great Bay Area. We have the Great Mall uh, here. And it looks like an opportunity where we can bring a lot of folks in, have them enjoy the city, uh, train for a healthy run, and give back a little to uh, our community and our residents. And I think we're all very excited about that. And so I'll be starting the planning process on that uh, probably a couple days after the pumpkin patch closes. And again, I urge you all to come out to the pumpkin patch. We have a great selection of pumpkins uh, purchased locally from a Santa Cruz ranch. And uh, I think you'll enjoy uh, the, the rides and the, and the slides and the jumpy house. And again, it's a great opportunity to be with your family and kids. Um, so other activities that we're looking forward to next year is we're always going to be looking at making sure that Rotary represents the whole community. And, and we're fortunate to live in one of the most diverse cities in the county. And we will be reaching out uh, in our membership committee to reach out to the whole city because we want Rotary to reflect uh, the true uh, composition of Milpitas residents. So we're very excited about that. Uh, I know our current president, Doris Roth, has done a tremendous job in reaching out. Uh, we've really tried to uh, in, give, bring more enthusiasm to our weekly meetings. We're trying to get better speakers. Well, can I plug the bowl off with the chief? Absolutely. This oh, is this, we got November, Monday night, November 14th, 6 p.m. at Mission Lanes here in Milpitas on Park Victoria Drive. I have uh, challenged our fire chief, Brian Sturdivant, to a bowl off who, where the money will be raised for our international Nicaragua project. For Rotary, so um, you, you can come down, put your name on the board, and uh, sponsor a winner, and uh, we'll raise some money for the club. So that's going to be fun. That's a great opportunity. It's a great project, the Nicaraguan project. We hope to contribute ten thousand dollars to a continuing effort to improve their water supplies, their health uh, organizations, and to really try to make a difference in Nicaragua. Nicaragua. That's great. Um, so we'll be looking to involve citizens of Milpitas in, in that effort, businesses as well. You, know, you talked about businesses and, and Rotary being um, a supporter of local businesses. I know that we've had a lot of support here at the Pumpkin Patch as well from, from local businesses. Uh, what are some of the businesses that have helped to, to make this a, a success? You know, Todd, I'm really glad you asked me that question because there have been some organizations that are almost like the glue that holds a community together. And I, I can't speak enough about uh, Allied Waste. Allied Waste donated the hay bales that you see here, has always been a consistent supporter of the community and Milpitas Rotary. Uh, we uh, got great donations from Jerry's Market for the sodas and the waters that we sell. Uh, that has been tremendous. Uh, Colleen Knoll and, and her Calaveras Montessori School sponsored one of the jumpy houses that we have here. That it was a tremendous contribution from, from Colleen's uh, uh, school. And I would assume this power is not free. Electrical power. Uh, no, in fact, uh, we've got uh, uh, efforts from uh, John Jay at Best Marine who donated two generators to help us power our uh, slide and our jumpy houses. That was a tremendous effort, and, uh, and uh, John has been an invaluable member of Rotary. Um, there has been a tremendous number of contributions, both large and small, that we can't uh, almost begin to describe, but we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all of your efforts. It's terrific. You have folks like uh, Roadrunner Glass, I know, Paul Mulder and, and his crew have been helpful, and Milpitas Mowers, and uh, we don't want to leave anybody out, but I'm sure that we are, because there have been a lot of folks uh, in the community that, that have been real um, instrumental in helping to make this a success. Milpitas Mowers has been great the last several years that I've been involved. Uh, Paul Mulder from uh, Roadrunner Glass uh, got his sister to loan us her RV uh, for the duration, and it's been extremely helpful. So yeah, I'd say this is a, a real community effort then. Very broad-based community effort, Todd. That's absolutely correct. Well, it looks like we're getting the, uh, the cutoff here. Uh, so you need to grab your pumpkin 
and and go. Is, is the <laughs> run, kind of, don't run, walk. don't walk. Get your <laughs> pumpkin here. Touch. Thank you very much for Thank having you, me. Thank you, sir. You really are a pleasure, it. and I am looking forward to a great Rotary. In fact, this man talked to me even about being on the board. So That's right. That was a huge undertaking. Thank you. I <laughs> thank can't you very wait. much, Todd. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for all you do. Absolutely. Great. Behind the wheel, there is no such thing as a small distraction. A public service reminder from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, who would rather help keep your bones strong than put them back together. Speak out against distracted driving at decidetodrive.org. My Jamie, she was my baby girl, a precious baby girl. When Jamie was a teenager, she would spend her lunch hours going to the tanning salons. I didn't realize how dangerous they were. If you tan when you're young, your risk for melanoma are increased by 75%. That's huge. What I would say to mothers that allow their daughters to tan, no mother should have to visit their daughter in a cemetery. One person an hour dies from melanoma. Jamie's hour was at one o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, March 16th, 2007. I hope no one else has to mark their hour. This message is brought to you by the American Academy of Dermatology. to Valley Homes on TV. Um, I'm Debbie Giordano, and this is Todd Flesner. Hey, we're at the pumpkin patch here. And folks okay. are coming out. They're enjoying uh, the pumpkin patch. Uh, we took a break. We just uh, had our guest speaker, Mark Tiernan, the uh, new incoming president for a Rotary Club, talk about the event. And as we're here, they're coming in. We it's, have our Interact cl uh, Club kids who are here to help out this afternoon. We've got people starting to pick out pumpkins. Yeah, and, this is exciting. Great weather, too. This is nice. It is. So, so what, what have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing lots of loans these days. Well, what have um, you and I been up to? Didn't what, didn't we do our little investment seminar we, last week? That we, was a lot we, of fun. And we did. That was that was really a lot of fun. Um, you know, you, I, and uh, Ami Shah, CPA, we had the opportunity to, to talk about the opportunity that we see here specifically in Milpitas for people investing in real estate. Right, right. And it, it was fantastic to be able to get that information out to folks. You know, and really, there's some com very compelling reasons why now is a great time to consider investing in real estate. Well, we presented a lot of other options that are available for investing, and nothing made any sense in terms of today's economic as it did in buying uh, real estate. That's so, right. so I believe we we talked about maybe getting together again. Uh, it seemed like that was a well-received event, and uh, maybe there'll be another event soon, and we can be able to have folks uh, tell them where the next one will be, and they can join us. Absolutely, we'll do that, and we'll walk through all the reasons why we think that you know now's a great time from the opportunities for potential appreciation because of where prices are, the tax advantages that they're available, um, the cash flow possibility that there is. You know, we'll walk through all those sort of things. The folks get a great idea about why this is a Yeah, they, a I know they time. were excited when they left. Yes, they so, were. So uh, listen, housing, it's in the paper. Uh, today, uh, a few days ago, the, house, the San Jose Mercury talked about housing must be focus of next federal stimulus plan. So uh, we're look, housing is the cornerstone, actually the cornerstone of, of, our, of our national economy. And we've talked about over the years short sales and foreclosures and the uh, distressed properties, how that impacts the market, how uh, our investments, you know, we talked about investing in rental property, how that's going to affect it, interest rates and how that affects. But 
you're going to see again another wave in the White House in Washington DC. They're going to be talking again about how to inject more stimulus into the housing recovery, so to speak. However, Todd, I want to say the Milpitas market is unique. It's local. Mm -hmm. It's stimulated by our local economy, which in all aspects is very good. In fact, we heard Mark Tiernan talk about issues on the Planning Commission as they're developing more stimulus here in the city. And we'll certainly see that. The numbers are good in Milpitas. The market is good. Well, yeah, as we talked last week at our, at our seminar as well, yeah, Milpitas has had a very strong, stable real estate state market. Yeah, you know, we have seen some of the um, correction in prices as it has the entire country, but not to the degree Correct. That, that we've seen other places. We have a um, strong employment center here, um, you know, great schools, great weather, um, great city services, and you know, all that adds up to being a great place, but also um, really supports our, our real estate market. I got to share with you a, a cute little thing, talk about employment. Today I got a call from a woman in England and I thought it was going to be one of those scams of send money overseas and do stuff. So I almost hung up the phone. She had a British accent. She and her husband are actually relocating to Melpitas because he's got a job right here at a local high-tech company right here in Melpitas. I thought that, that that's something to talk about. Well, that's, that's good to hear anecdotally that, you know, that there's hiring going on here locally and people are relocating here from other parts of the world. You know, people, the world has actually come to Milpitas because it is a great place to live. Absolutely. So let's, let's talk about statistics. Let's uh, do. Because I, I know you have those. Oh, I always of, do. I would never want to disappoint you, Todd. So <laughs> <laughs> let's take a look at how our, our local market is doing. Okay. Like I said, we've, it's been strong. Yep. Uh, stable. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. Well, here we are today. Uh, single family homes. There's 72 active, 77 pending, 129 sold in the last six months, of which 63 are under 500,000. Uh, last year there were 76 active, 88 pending, 128 sold in the last six months, and 62 under 500k. If that if that isn't the definition of stability, I don't know what is. Yeah, absolutely. Year after year, we've seen the stable numbers in terms of activity. So condos uh, recovering. I'd have to say a recovery market, which is good. Uh, 23 active today, 57 pending, 73 sold in the last six months. A year ago, there were 53 active. 59 pending and 59 sold in the last six months. So less inventory translating into higher sales means eventually the prices are going to go back upward. And I'll be, uh, I should have the numbers in from the San Jose Real Estate, Bo Santa Clara Board of Realtors uh, next show to talk about those uh, prices and how that's going to affect the price. And I think we're going to see an increase in pricing. Well, I know as we looked at um, the numbers, it in terms of um, single family housing a week or so ago, that there's really been stable here over the last year in terms of those prices. So, uh, you know, a year ago's prices versus this year's prices, we're, we're on par. So with how, how are, uh, in terms of your loans and, and, and where you are with clients, I know you're busy. You and I, yes. uh, we, we're like two ships in the <laughs> night meeting by cell phone or whatever, but um, to, to match up our schedules and to help our clients. In fact, we just closed a deal Friday. We you did. did the loan, I did the, uh, the, the end of the transaction. How are, bu how are buyers and um, homeowners that are refinancing, how are they meeting the appraisal challenges? How are those coming in? You know, the, the appraisals have actually been um, not as much of a challenge as they have been. It, it is very localized, dependent upon the market. Um, you know, for folks who, who are refinancing, um, you know, if they bought in the last year or two, they're doing just fine. If they bought four or five years ago, they, you know, there has been some um, depreciation over that course of time. Okay. So it is very, very much a, a case by case basis. But um, the appraisal process is a bit more predictable these days in terms of how that's going. Uh, we had some changes. We've had um, a couple of appraisers in our shows here recently as we've walked through some of the changes in the appraisal process. So let me ask you, anybody that had maybe tried to refinance a year ago or so and they were shut down by the appraisal process, should they phone you and, and give it a try again? or yeah, how? Absolutely. It's, it's always worth taking a look at. Okay. You know, we can take a look and see what the recent activity in the market has shown okay. and if, if there's an opportunity there. Um, Great. But, you know, the the sales are good. It's, again, you know, folks are getting great buys these days. 
And uh, I know that the, the client that we helped at, we closed just the other day, was just thrilled. Well, thrilled. Just thrilled, thrilled. to be able to be in the new That property. was kind of a neat trend. Uh, she started the deal at 250000 uh -huh. for a condo. The appraisal came in lower, and we got we got her the place uh, <laughs> at, a, at that lower reduced rate. So it worked to our advantage to have a lower appraisal. Well, yeah, and the, and the appraisers are, are really only going to be looking at what is sold recently that's going to support that particular price. And so, you know, when you're buying, you have that protection that, okay, you know, you're not overpaying, that the market is supporting what the price is that you're paying, which is a little bit different than what's happening in, in a refinance transaction. Um, you know, but, but things are good. Interest rates remain extremely low. Yeah, so what did I see? Your your notes on Monday is right around four percent, ticked up a little bit. Yeah, up, up just a little bit off of the all-time lows. So we're in the low fours, four and an eighth or so, and it you know it does vary a little bit on a day-to-day -day basis and case-to-case -case basis as well in terms of credit scores, right. equity, and um, all the other factors that go into. I don't think I would want your job. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you wouldn't want my job. So that that's why we make a great team. Well, you know, we all do what we're best at. Absolutely. And it is and it is a joy to work with you, I've got to say. So anyway, um, well, I guess uh, we'll close for today or this afternoon. It's been fun coming out here. Yeah, it's, it's been fun doing this show with you as well, Debbie. You know, we get to learn a lot about our local community here, talking with folks like Mark Tiernan and others who really make this a special place to live. Yep, it is. So it is. Milpitas is a great town. We, uh, we appreciate you tuning in and, and putting up with us from <laughs> how, about, <laughs> how about an email address if anybody has information about the show or any other questions they need to ask? Certainly. Um, Todd at SternMortgage.com. So that's T-O-D-D at Stern, S-T-E-R-N, Mortgage, M-O-R-T-G. A G E dot com and, and Debbie. Uh, folks, um, yep, uh, Giordano, my last name, G I O R D A N O, D J at AOL dot com. Todd, we'll see you next time. You never know where we're going to pop up on Valley Homes on TV, yeah? It'll be around Milpita somewhere. Somewhere. Look for it.